All right, welcome back to the 2018 edition of The Devil's Advocate. Some of you have obviously been here before, and we're very happy to see you back. What I'm doing right now is filling while I try and bring up the script, right? All right, let me introduce everybody to you. Starting here on my right, but certainly on my left, uh, Stephanie Miller. She is the number one progressive host in America with six million listeners. LA Weekly calls Stephanie the voice of the resistance, and she is now wrapping up the latest version of her hugely successful, hugely successful, Stephanie Miller's Sexy Liberal Blue Wave Tour. You can see them coming up soon at the Saban Theater in Beverly Hills. That's going to happen on November 3rd. You get two for one, because you know who else is going to be there? John Fugelsang. Now, you know, John has been murdered on CSI. He got George Harrison to give his final performance on VH1. That's absolutely true. He got Mitt Romney's advisor to uh, call Mitt the Etch-A-Sketch candidate on CNN. He's been a regular on MSNBC, CNN, Fox, and, of course, the host of Tell Me Everything with John Fugel saying every weekday on Sirius XM Insight. All right, now, the, my, my favorite editions, because I just love them. Individually, they're known as Francis Callier and Angela V. Shelton, but together, they are Frangela. <laughs> and as luck would have it, they are also part of the Stephanie Miller Sexy Liberals. You can watch their new time, new daytime talk show, which I recommend you do. It's called Me Time with Frangela. You can listen to their podcast, The Final Word, and you can pick up their new comedy album entitled Resist. What, where'd you get that title? I don't know. Wow, I wonder where that came from. You can get that at killrockstars.com. Now, seated on my left, the conservatives, but not today. We're, let's see where everybody is. Let's start with Alicia. Alicia Krause. She is the host and contributor at Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire, which, as you likely know, is a conservative news and commentary site. Alicia has worked in, what is it, y'all radio? Talk radio. Oh, well, it said y'all on, on my thing there. <laughs> I was I, going, I didn't I know use, you were a southern radio No, because I'm a racist conservative. I use y'all oh. so much that iPhone <laughs> memorizes it. she got a laugh on that. That's, that's I try. Uh. Talk radio. She uh, spent many years on air morning drive host and has served as the producing, uh, the producer of the Sean Hannity radio show. She enjoys befriending liberals to show them that not all conservatives are old, rich, white dudes. She is Alicia Krause. I took that comment personally, by the way. <laughs> Sitting all the way down there on the left, Adam Yenzer, he is a comedian who has appeared on Conan, on Fox. He's an Emmy Award winning writer for the Ellen DeGeneres Show. He is Adam Yenzer. Thank you. Oh, come on. All right, so he's behind the scenes. There. You know, you can still applaud the man. He's a funny guy. And of course, back as always, one of our continuing champions. He's a writer, producer, he's a comedian, he is a triple flash <laughs> who has written on some of your favorite TV shows, some of mine, I'll tell you that. He is also the editor and founder of theloftestparty.com. Currently, he can be seen on stage from coast to coast as part of the Deplorable Comedy Tour. He is Michael Loftus. Thank you. All right, so many of you know how we play our game, right? Basically, my friends here who are conservatives, not today. They will be liberals. My friends here who are liberals, not today. They will be conservatives. And we begin with this debate point. You ready? All right, so imagine you walk into the restaurant downstairs here, right here in the convention center. And there, sitting at a table, sharing a burger and a Diet Coke, are Mitch McConnell and his wife, Elaine Chow. Do you, A, form an immediate protest and shout them out of the restaurant, forcing them to seek safety and solace in the taco stand across the street? <laughs> Do you, B, congratulate them for their dedicated service to our country? 
Or do you see, sit down to eat your own burger and deal with the repressed anger that is ruining your lunch? We begin with Stephanie Miller. <laughs> Gosh, I love doing this panel so much, Rick. <laughs> you do. I hate it. I'm bad at it. You and I still it. come back every year because I love it. you. Of course, I would thank them for their... Their service to America. I would compliment uh, Mitch McConnell's turtle shell. I would ask if he's enjoying his piece of lettuce, if he would like me to get him more. I would tell him uh, I agree that Social Security is an entitlement and I am not entitled to it, even though I paid into it my whole life, because you know what? The government, when conservatives are in charge, know better. And if you would like it back, I would say, thank you, sir, please, sir, and may I have another, thank you. I believe in small government unless conservatives are in charge and then you do what you want with my social security and Medicare. Thank you. Alicia Krause. I mean, first of all, Elaine Chow should be offended to even be associated with the Trump administration and she is a shame to women everywhere. How dare she? Uh, and Mitch McConnell, he, he deserves no peace. We should, any public place and even their homes really where these people think they deserve to be, they should be shamed out of them. We should shout them down and we Terrarium. should make our voices heard because we deserve to be heard and my truth deserves to be heard and hashtag yes all women. All right, John, you want to talk about your truth? John, Sure, if I were to see Mitch McConnell and his lovely wife eating in a restaurant, I would sit down, well, no, I wouldn't want to sit down uh, because I might be stealing someone else's seat and that's not okay unless it's Merrick Garland. Um, <laughs> Let me tell you something. Mitch McConnell is a hero for being both the largest recipient of big oil donations in the entire Senate and of voting to continue their subsidies. So shill, baby, shill is what I say. Let me tell you something. Oh, yeah. I admire any guy who's the... F he, he not only managed to make Obama the first president to not get an up or down vote on a Supreme Court nominee, but it was also the only black president, and that's sheerly a coincidence that it happened that way. They, let me tell you, if I were able to sit down with Mitch McConnell and his wife, I would eat so much trans fats, my colon would be the one obstructing and delaying, okay? Uh, and, and when it comes to obstructing and delaying, let me tell you something. He doesn't delay when he knows there's another Kavanaugh accuser and he tries to ram a vote through anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? So in general, uh, I think he's a great guy. He's a real hero. And uh, uh, honestly, when I actually watched him go on stage at CPAC carrying a rifle, <laughs> I didn't say, bitch, you're trying to hard. I said, keep on going, Mitch, because you are the regressive of my dreams, and uh, Jesus hates poor people. <laughs> Michael Loftus, your rebuttal. If we could hurry this up, I have a clan meeting and a Proud Girls meeting <laughs> to get to. As a lifelong liberal, and I am also, I just found out, one two thousandth Cherokee, I... <laughs> I am not going to stand by and watch Mitch McConnell eat because that means he's happy and I am not happy. Have We've you got to confront the hamburgers them. downstairs? Yes, oh. we have got to confront him when he tries to eat a hamburger with his turtleneck. We have to confront him uh, when he's on the phone. We have to confront him in the bathroom. I want to scare the shit Shame. out of every Republican on the face of the planet. I want to scare the racism right out of them. <laughs> All right. Surround oh, them and chant. Yeah. On. Only through spittle in the face will they learn the error of their ways. Frangela. Uh, well, first of all, we'd like to say as black women Republicans, Um, that we just think it's really important to acknowledge that we have a right, a God-given right to go through the day without ever encountering an opinion we don't agree with. That's right. Without ever be having anybody be even slightly rude to us. I mean, certainly we've never encountered that. No, never. But this is what we would do if we ran into Mitch and his wife. We would build them their very own tent city. Okay, yeah. and separate them so they could enjoy their meals in peace. Okay? Away, from, away from the people that they were voted to represent, most of whom are not worth representing. Mm -hmm. So they can I'm enjoy. just going to say that in my experience, I think it's our experience as black women, if you, when you're an elected representative, you don't have to talk to the public. Who said that was part of the job? 
I don't, you know. I just, Adam, oh, well, I just take Alicia issue. Alicia wanted to bring I, something. I just it. take issue with Diamond and Silk over there that think that they speak <laughs> for <laughs> all <laughs> black <laughs> women <laughs> in America. <laughs> it's because all fun until we bring in the fabrics, lady. <laughs> all fun. And actually, my name. Back up off that. Back up <laughs> off that. Real <laughs> and I'm Zirconia, not Diamond. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Linen. Hello? Well, Adam Yenzer. Yeah, first of all, they're clearly just racist who hate black people. Second of all, second of all, we need to resist. We cannot let Mitch McConnell have any moment of peace. I would go in there, I'd pour the Diet Coke on him. I'd take the plastic straw out of there because it's destroying our environment. We need to stop plastic straws. They're Thank horrible. And he is most at risk. He's a turtle. It could get stuck up its nose and he dies. Then I would go out in the alleyway, I'd start trash can fires, I would break windows because I am loving and tolerant and I hate violence. All right. I hope Mitch McConnell is able to have a peaceful Christmas in the Galapagos Islands with his it. relatives <laughs> without any of you angry mobsters accosting. All right, did we overdo the turtle jokes? I'm just saying, right? Are we done? All, All right. right. All right. Next creature, topic. Rick. Next topic. Just two words, people. Two words. Lindsay. Graham. Alicia. You know, Lindsey Graham should be ashamed of himself, and I guarantee you that John McCain, that great statesman, is rolling over in his grave because he would not have let the Republicans get away with the shit that Too they soon. pulled in that Judiciary Committee. Too soon. Shame on Lindsey Graham. Shame. Stephanie Miller. As a gay Republican woman... <laughs> I don't really like dick, but <laughs> Lindsey Graham is so macho, particularly when he gets mad, like in that hearing, am I right? Just, oh, so butch. Like I, for that penis, I would come to the other side. The, <laughs> how dare anyone imply he is gay? The only he thing he is you. fluid on is his opinions uh, on Trump, which I like fluidity in that sense mm. in a man. Mm. Want some of that Lindsey Graham dick. <laughs> Yay. Okay, Michael. Lindsey Graham is a war criminal <laughs> who wipes his ass with the Constitution and blows his nose with the Declaration of Independence. And only when he's wearing concrete shoes and paraded around and drinking the urine off of a Robert E. Lee statue will we ever have peace in America. Damn. I just love people. <laughs> Angry liberals. John Fugelsang. Well, I have a quote I want to read about Lindsey Graham, uh, which is that um, he's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. He doesn't re represent my party and doesn't represent the values, the men and women who wear the uniform. Oh, I'm sorry. This is what Lindsey said about Donald Trump. Um, uh, then... Speaking of John McCain, let me say how much I miss seeing Lindsay and John McCain together all the time. They were a same-sex couple I could believe in. Two men opposed to gay Daniel. weddings who always looked like they were announcing one. Now, you liberals, you elitist liberals with your proper use of apostrophes in your your and your elitism, let me tell you something. You want to say that Lindsey Graham is a flip-flapper, and I know to your untrained minds it might appear that way. Yes, he held open a Supreme Court seat for 400 days, but then demanded uh, he freaked out over a one-week wait to investigate sexual assault. Yes, he said if Hillary Clinton was elected, we should obstruct and never let her have a single Supreme Court justice on the court. I know, you want to say he flip-flops, he went after Bill Clinton for perjury, doesn't mind when Kavanaugh does it multiple times. It's almost to the untrained eye like Lindsey Graham likes things both ways. What I'm telling you is this. Not when he's my man. Stop asking, how did Lindsey Graham change from impeaching a POTUS for minor reasons 10 years ago to protecting a POTUS for multiple crimes today? There has been zero change in Lindsey Graham. He was doing the bidding of his donors then, and he does the bidding of his donors now, and I applaud his consistency. All what? right, Adam Yenzer. So, so much like a Republican, it's spooky. Yeah. Yeah, which side are we each on again here? Uh, no, Lindsey Graham conducted himself in a way completely unbecoming of a senator. He yelled, he screamed, he put on a show, he was dramatic. He has such a temper, I would hate to be that man's husband. Secondly, 
He defended Brett Kavanaugh. I don't know how you could possibly defend Brett Kavanaugh or the take that man's side. Brett Kavanaugh. He's clearly, I mean, did you hear her testimony? Epinephrine, neuroepinephrine, medulla oblongata, cerebral cortex, frontal lobe. What more evidence could you possibly want? The man is a gang rapist. <laughs> Frangella, your rebuttal. First of all, we want it to be known that both Lindsay and Brett are totally fucking fun at a kegger. What up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are the best beer pong team ever. Ever? And let me tell you that we have, we have partied with them so many times, and they even said they didn't even mind that we were black. And it was a yeah. like really cool it moment. It was so cool. It was so cool. You, really, you should have seen it. We really felt like we were, you know, we'd gotten somewhere <laughs> yeah. you know, in life. And I just want to say that... Um, they're cool. Yeah. And, and Lindsay is great in dinner theater, too. Oh, my He's gosh. So you should good. see him play Othello. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. We move on to our... Our next topic. This time, just three words. Ready? Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Alicia. I mean, people talk about how she wears designer clothes and how that doesn't make her a woman of the people. But as a fellow, uh, you know, Upper West Side liberal that also wears designer clothes, I feel like she is a woman of the people and she can represent all women and she is just the next generation. I mean, she and Beto are the future Beto. of the Democratic Party. And, you know, I just really hope that Ted Cruz gets back to being an Uber driver because he does not, I mean, he complains and his wife is like moaning about not being able to afford a second home. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez doesn't even have a home, folks. She's from the Bronx and she's going to represent New York so well. Did you say Beto? Beto? Stephanie Miller. Socialist. She is a socialist. Too young, too brown, too many names. <laughs> Fucking remember Ocasio. What? What? I don't. I, socialist. She's going to take all of our money, use it to buy... I don't know, maple syrup and, and lick She's it off Bernie Venezuela. Sanders' body. That, no! Too many names. That's it? You didn't even mention socialist. I did. Oh, okay. Socialist. I guess I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. Do Michael not. Loftus. I know that you're scared by a strong brown woman, which I am one two thousandth of. <laughs> That's my Cherokee part, is also a brown woman. And sure, she might not have the fancy book learning, but she knows one thing. Sharing is caring. Yep. And socialism works every single time you try it. And come on, you guys. Look What's wrong Finland. with trying? Excuse me? Look at Finland. It worked there. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Finland. Without Finland, we don't have Legos or Minecraft. Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Thank you. So come on. Rise up. Don't let them have a moment's peace. Brett Kavanaugh lives off the blood of dead puppies. They would have dead puppy dr blood drinking parties in, in Finland. High there's no dead puppies. I, I there are know, no John. dead puppies in Finland He's got because a point. they run the country and they make video games. Don't you want that? He's got a point. I love Angry Birds. You know, I can't decide what I hate about Alexandria Ocasio Cortez most. Is it the fact that she didn't actually keep the clothes from the photo shoot that she actually returned at the end of it? And and she doesn't wear designer clothes all the time, that's a lie. Or do I hate the fact that, you know, she wants to have an assault weapons ban, which is why we should impeach Reagan retroactively, because uh, he supported that too. Let me tell you something. I think what I hate most about her is that she's not a real socialist. Uh, she's a democratic socialist who has caused, called for the nationalization of zero private industries, which means she sucks at being a socialist. What I want to tell you is she's fighting for housing as a human right, right? What kind of Christian would stand for that? She believes scientists. It's the 21st century. Haven't we moved beyond science. She wants to clean up campaign finance reform. How is my side supposed to get elected without bribery other than gerrymandering crooked voter ID laws in an electoral college founded by slave owners? She I feel like wants as a to white, restore glass steagle, which will make it harder for the banks to rip off you good people. And if it wasn't for great housing crashes like Bush, you wouldn't have gotten Obama. And finally, she wants to end private prisons and have criminal justice reform. Let me tell you something. If we wanted moral clarity, we wouldn't be voting Republican. And I'm going to tell you something else. 
I don't care if you call me racist for saying that she looks like MS-13 because of her uh, ethnicity. It's not racism until a conservative white man says it is. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You are uh, a horrible conservative. Dare you rebut I think that, Adam? You out. Well, to John's credit, I'm glad he's the first one over there who admitted she is not a socialist. She is a democratic socialist, which I don't know the difference between the two, and neither does she. So I love her for that. I don't understand socialism at all, other than I like to wear Che Guevara t-shirts, which I don't know if he was a socialist or not. Who came here on roads? It, Who came here on roads? I do, I do love Octavia Cortez, because she understands socialism just as well as I do. <laughs> we should have a bonus round. Who could define democratic socialism? But first, Frangella. Um, who is that? Who is what? This, the, the person you're talking about. Oh, wait, is she, she did a collabo with Demi Lovato, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. That's right, that's the one. She seems really great then. Yeah. Go Shay. I don't have no idea. This is, she's, oh, she's a Latina. Oh! <laughs> she's Got running it. for office. Got it. Well, that is very nice. Mm -hmm. Good for her. For her. Okay. <laughs> you're, uh, you're through? Yeah. You're finished? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, let's get serious now, huh? All right, we're gonna get serious? Yeah. All right, according to a new Environmental Protection Agency report issued just this past week, greenhouse gases, a leading cause of climate change, decreased by nearly 3% during the first year of the Trump administration, with emissions from large power plants dropping by 4.5%. Result that President Trump will be the greatest environmental president in the history of the nation and will be given the first Scott Pruitt Memorial Award if you can taste the air and smell the air. Damn it, it's great air. Stephanie. <laughs> Listen, we all agree President Trump <laughs> has... In character. What? Stay I am... I am. I, uh, has superpowers. He, as he told us, has a knack for science. He has a sense of it, like a spidey sense, which I trust more than those pinhead scientists. Wrong with a spidey sense. <laughs> what? What is this? Are you a pothead? What is that, Rick? No, that's just just nicotine. It's the last good air. You want to try? Pothead it? liberal. That's over the last there. good it's air. California. In the it's legal here. Yeah. Leave him yeah. alone. Fucking hippie. So I see I can count okay. on the liberals to protect. My point is, the pinhead geek scientists are going to kill our industry, right? And we need uh, the president's uh, side sense about what's scientific or not. Woo! Yeah. Well, she had a... Stephanie, Stephanie may need a few minutes after that one, I think. Alicia! Donald Trump poisoned those children in Flint, Michigan, and it is a shame that none of you are recognizing that. Scott Pruitt oh, was the do. worst thing to happen to the environment, literally, since ever. And these, like, creationists and these anti-global warming people, there are thousands of scientists who believe in global warming. It doesn't matter that there's also other scientists that say it doesn't exist. Name three. There are so many scientists that believe in global warming. And he's opening up Anwar. He's going to kill all of the elks and all of the beauty up there. He should just stay out of his business and pot is awesome. Rebuttal, John Fugel saying? Well, I'm not a scientist, but... That's what I say when I'm about to tell you not to trust scientists. I'm not a scientist, but I'm proud to live in a country where we think climate science is fake, but pro wrestling is real. Let me tell you something. <laughs> climate science is a sinister conspiracy by the world scientific community to make us think pollution is bad, and I refuse to be suckered by it. And I'll tell you why. You will never win the lotto, but every opportunistic entrepreneurial person in here will never win the lottery but has a shot at making millions by being an oil industry funded climate skeptic denier and that's a damn good job we can create now i'm going to tell you something i don't want to believe it because if, if we clean up all the air and clean up all the water and clean up all the land and reduce pollution and create thousands of new green jobs and revitalize the economy what if that's all just for nothing, people? What if that's all just for nothing? Because 97% of the world's scientists were wrong, okay? The only reason to start believing in climate science is so we can have one more thing to blame on Barack Obama. But I'm not there yet. So all I'm going to say is when I'm walking on the beach with my little boy and he says, what's this black oily stuff washing up, Daddy? I'm going to proudly tell him that's big government getting off our backs. <laughs> 
That's a pretty compelling argument, Michael Loftus. What do you have to say to that? I am just sorry that you are such science deniers because every scientist ever in the history of education agrees that global warming is real. And I'm sorry, but it is real. In the time it took me to say that, 500 polar bears committed suicide. <laughs> and the ocean rose three feet. That is why you're, it's so important that that Donald Trump, who you just love so much, who makes me sick, he knows the ocean is rising. It just rose how many feet? Three feet, now five. Jerry Brown talking. is so and right. And a hundred more dead All polar bears. All the scientists bears. agree on this. That's why Trump knows it's real. He knows it's real. That's why he wants to build the wall to keep out the, the, the sewage that will be coming up. Through, through Central and South America. Yeah, We're going to be Mexico. living in a little pool of and, nothing. And that's not life. That's and, not life. I don't want to live like that. I want to live long enough to scare the shit out of Mitch McConnell. <laughs> Did he just make some kind because of equation Because I'm between one 2000s Czechoslovakian Indian. Can we talk about this Mexico sewage thing? <laughs> it's a wonderful country. It's a great country. Franchise. You should do something with listen, it. Listen, listen. <laughs> President Trump is the second coming of Jesus, number one, okay? And he would have been the first coming, but he's generous that way. Yes, okay? And what people make fun of his orange skin, but what you people don't recognize and realize is the fact that he is taking his breath and cleansing the air, yeah. okay? And can we just say, what's wrong with air you can see? Yes. Okay. I'm just saying, if the pilots can see the air, maybe there won't be so much turbulence. Yeah. When we're on our flights. Yes. And things to, to places. So that's first. And number two, the bottled water works just fine. I don't know what people's problem is. Yeah. <laughs> like, why does Flint not have a 7-Eleven? I don't get it. I don't get it. <gasps> I, just, well, well, I just got a text <laughs> message. I just got a text message from 23andMe. I'm actually one 2,000th polar bear. I always suspect And my that aunt just you. killed herself. <laughs> Adam well, They just mentioned flights. On that topic, I have flown in a private jet to several climate summits over and over again. <laughs> and what I have learned about the climate and the 3% reduction in the uh, uh, greenhouse levels is that that is all Obama. Obama mm -hmm. started ra lowering these levels before Trump ever took office. Because what these scientists agree on is that everything good that happens under Trump is grandfathered in as it was Obama's fault. But everything bad that happens under Trump is only Trump's fault. So don't go blaming Obama and calling him names. He did all the good things and Trump did all the bad things. Obama le lowered the levels of CO2 by 2% when he was still in middle school. Because he wasn't Jesus. <laughs> How dare you? All right, now we have an agree or disagree. Agree or disagree, the only way America can survive as a nation is to open the doors and windows wide and allow the fresh air of socialism to wash clean the shackles of a corrupt and corroded capitalist society. Alicia. I mean, I didn't know if you knew this, but not only is the Pope on my side when it comes to global warming, I mean, the Pope, you guys, who, who speaks for billions of, of people in the world, he also agrees with me that Jesus was a socialist. And if Jesus was here on earth today in the form of Barack Obama, he would be going down to the border and letting in all of those innocent women and children. And then he would go to the Oval Office and tell Donald Trump what a vicious racist he is. Stephanie Miller. <laughs> How much longer? Okay. <laughs> um, you are right. Uh, socialism is uh, evil. I, uh, as an American, I want the right to die if I even get a cold. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want big government giving me a Kleenex because that is my right as an American. Right? Right. Right? Yeah. Right. Listen, right. It, <laughs> if I have to kidnap a hobo and take out their kidney, I, I, that's, you know what? My, I'm stronger. It's the battle, right? If I'm stronger You're than self -starter. him. Self-starter. Fuck that hobo. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, you wake up in a bathtub full of ice. That's you're, it's because you're lazy, man. I would say that's Darwinian, but I don't yeah. believe in Darwin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to live under capitalism, not uh, socialism, so... Tough luck, hobo. You're fucked. Michael Loftus. 
Any uh, hobo references you'd like to add to the conversation? I know we're having a lot of fun. Are we? But I'm actually one two thousandth hobo. Uh, okay? So apologize. let's just check uh, our white liberal. male privilege at the apologize. door. These people just want to lock them up and put yeah. them in institutions. And it's so unfair. They have the right to poop and use their heroin needles on the streets like they please. You think there's a little too much white privilege on this side, particularly down at the end? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have you know, and this is true, I am 54% white. Shaking. Like I said before, diamond and silk do not speak for all Excuse women. me, I am 54% white, and that's the truth. <laughs> I'm I did, so it sorry. It is absolutely true. I did Ancestry or 23. I don't know. I had Bonita, my maid, do it. But the point is, <laughs> I am 54% European. <laughs> And my, and my property did get more valuable. <laughs> there goes the neighborhood on the other half of your house. <gasps> I think she, I'm, I, she's Nigerian. <laughs> I think Adam's up. What? I'm lost. Yeah. I'm well, confused. first of all, I want to thank her for bringing up the Pope. The Pope is a great leftist. He's pro, he's pro abortion. He's pro gay marriage. He's super liberal. He loves to fight uh, climate change. Best Pope Unless ever. Unless he gets in trouble for the sex abuse scandal, then he's a horrible conservative Republican, and I'll disown him. But right now, he's an awesome leftist. Second of all, we need socialism because I don't know if you know this, but right now, the wealth in this country, the distribution, 99% of the wealth belongs to one tenth of one percent of Americans. Which means, if you imagine America. America as Elizabeth Warren, all the wealth would be in the Native American part. Hmm, something yeah. to think about. All right, another. Rick, I didn't get, Rick, I didn't get a turn on that one. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, that's John. Okay, if I may, on I so, we're still doing social. Yeah, let's right? let another yeah, white man talk. Yeah, you're just right. gonna let another white. White guy like, didn't get a turn. Confused, right? I'm demanding my hand white out. I'm demanding my hand Seriously? out now. He's entitled he to speak, speak for me. He his cannot life. speak. By the way, he sexually assaulted me backstage. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember how I got there. I don't remember what happened, but he sexually assaulted me, and it is a shame. And if he speaks, if he goes and speaks, he does not believe my truth. Okay, well, nobody likes mocking assault survivors more than me, but I want to bring it back to uh, socialism, if I could. I have a quote from Hubert Humphrey. Compassion is not weakness, and concern for un the unfortunate is not socialism. Hubert Humphrey, but he was just a snowflake, libtard, globalist cuck. Look, I'm so proud that Donald Trump is so anti-socialist, he'll start a trade war with China and then give $12 billion to our farmers, which we borrow from China. Well, the point is, Barack Obama was such a horrible socialist, he actually forced people to buy private health insurance, as opposed to the real capitalist way where poor people show up at the emergency room and we, the local taxpayer, pay for it. Uh, listen, I am the most anti-socialist person there. I would like to send the troops and the police after socialists, except that's socialism. Uh, I would like you to all write an angry letter to your congressman about socialism, but don't use the post office because that's socialism. We have to march in the streets against socialism, but streets are socialists, so don't do that. I think socialists should be taken out to the trash, but not a public landfill because that's socialism. I think we should flush it down the toilet, except I don't do that because our sewer system is socialist. Uh, and I also think that uh, we should put them all in jail, except jails are still socialist. The point is, the last Republican president to balance a budget with a surplus was Eisenhower, and he was a filthy socialist. GI Bill, interstate highway plan, uh, having progressive taxation, having, having strong union support from the Republican Party. Thank God we've moved beyond those balanced budgets and surpluses. I'm so glad we have a president who will now build a wall across thousands of miles of private and commercial property in deserts and rivers and forests so the people of Mexico don't have to see our crumbling roads and bridges. Thank you. All right. All right, one more. What are more. you so afraid of? Yeah, we are <laughs> who the, hurt you? We are he the resistance. Who hurt you? And millennials are going to get out there and vote. We don't know how to buy stamps to absentee vote, but Rock the Vote is helping us register to vote, and we are registering people to vote everywhere where you people don't want people to go vote. Okay. <laughs> Another agree or disagree. Should the Democrats win control of the House of Representatives in November? No cheers on that, really? Mm -hmm. It will not in any way be the fault of President Trump. However, if the Republicans succeed in holding on to control, the credit will all go to Trump. Agree or disagree, Alicia? Everything is Donald Trump's fault. I mean, I don't understand why you guys aren't hearing me. Everything is his fault. And if, if the Democrats win, thank God, because then maybe we can finally impeach him. Stephanie Miller? 
Um, I agree with uh, Frangela. The, uh, uh, What's happening? Oh, thank you. I agree with Frangela. Yeah, see? Trying to shut down our voices, right? Right? Always do the right wing has no voice in this right. country. Yeah. They're on no radio stations. They have no time. Main right? Street Media, Trying to man. shut down the right wing voice in America. Did you see what they did? I know. We, we saw, saw it. it. We, we saw, saw it. it. Your speech is violence and your but, speech offends okay, me. Okay, maybe I did that myself, but like Donald Trump, <laughs> this was not my fault. And it will not be his fault if there is a blue wave. You know why? Because he's a superhero. He's Spider-Man meets baby Jesus. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. Right? Which yes. technically would make him the third coming something my point is he's will, all of the comings we think yeah yeah it will not nothing is ever his fault because spider-man fuck baby jesus or something <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if i like the spider-man part in there but okay we'll go with it michael loftus listen there is going to be a blue wave yeah we've had enough and we're registering people in record numbers Kirk, we're going to stop pure evil i have an anonymous source who talked to a friend at a, guy, a guy's house that knows a dude at the New York Times that has proof <laughs> that Donald Trump is actually Adolf Hitler. He just shaved his mustache, and that's why he does the hair. Anyway, whatever. We, suspect we, are rec we are going to have record voting turnout. And listen, we're going to do whatever it takes. And if that means wearing black hoodies and masks and beating people up, then yeah, yes. that's how you do love. Wouldn't be your first hood. That's how love spreads its wings. That's what we and need sure, for peace. If some of us might have to vote one, two, three, four, five times in different places, but that's what it's going to take to bring love back and acceptance. And I'm sorry that I don't have an ending for this bit. Yeah, I have. But that's one for just you. your white privilege expecting me to have, have a big one. laugh at the I end. I have an ending So why don't you, you check yourself before you wreck yourself? Rebuttal, John Fugel saying. Look, I love Trump because as an American Christian, we finally have gotten around to worshiping Jesus as a God and not following his inconveniently liberal teachings. So here's the point. Uh, the majority of Americans in 2016 voted against Trump. They voted against bringing back torture. They voted against uh, hating immigrants. They voted against homophobia. They voted against a bigoted Muslim ban. They voted against grabbing women by the pussy. They voted against making the rich richer. They voted against the racism. And thank God, dead slave owners had the foresight to demand an electoral college. Because let me tell you, democracy is the worst thing to ever happen to voting, if you ask me. When we realized that the majority of Americans reject our opinions, we reject democracy and thank God for it. Do you realize how lucky we are that those dead slave owners demanded an electoral college because they didn't want to count their human property as actual humans? Thank God for it because today a vote in Wyoming is worth three times the power of a vote in New York and California, states which give more than they take to the other states, and that's a good thing, my friends. I'm against affirmative action and a level playing field for people of or minorities, but God damn it, we need affirmative of action for minority states so states with no occupants can be on a level playing field and have as much power as the states that contribute so much more to our economy so god bless mr trump hillary clinton hillary oh yeah you're all funny hillary clinton won the popular vote by 360 million votes okay so the people have spoken Not you talk a president. lot about the electoral yeah. college i'm still paying back my electoral college student loans so I want to get rid of it. Adam Yenzer. Yeah, conservatives can't even think critically. He's not, he's not coming up with these points. He's just reading talking points off a card. Secondly, I don't even know why we're considering... Him. I don't even know why we're considering the possibility that the Democrats aren't going to win in November. We're going to have a blue wave. They're going to take the House. Maybe they'll even take the Senate. I am 100% sure, just like I was 100% sure Hillary was going to win. <laughs> we're she gonna did. take the House. We're going to take the Senate. Then we're going to take your guns. Frangela. Okay, first of all, we want it to it's be It's Frangela. That, oh. that, no, he's Sorry. white. He can call us what he wants. The point yeah. is, <laughs> that's not for us to decide, no, Stephanie. That's no. not for us to decide Good. how we get labeled. Know um, your place. Know your place. We are conservative. We are so conservative. We are so much conservative than those women that you keep thinking we are. Yeah. Um, because, like, we're suppressing our own vote. Absolutely. Like... Like, we have gerrymandered ourselves, ourselves. okay? <laughs> I keep, we keep telling each other the wrong date to vote. Yes. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I got in front of her car to keep her from going to the polling station. That's right. That's what I do. Then we drove to my grandmother's house and we locked them in it. Yes. <laughs> Go Trump. 
All right, on those, on those important words, uh, we left a few minutes in case you guys had something you wanted to say to these amazingly funny people. There is a, where's Alex? If she can talk back, Mike she'll is bring here the, she'll on bring the microphone. It's right stage left, here. audience right. Yeah. It's a talk back, Mike. Anyone, you, you actually. She's going to bring it to you. As much as I enjoy the political food fighting, I guess, but uh, <laughs> how do we get both parties to actually work together to solve issues like Social Security? Because if you read the actuary reports, you know, we're, we have almost like a trillion dollar unfunded pension liability. But it seems like if we want to actually increase the, the, the retirement age, then all the Democrats will say, oh, Paul Ryan wants to drive your granny off, granny off a cliff. But if you want to raise like the uh, payroll tax cap, then everyone says, oh, you're you know, a communist. So how do we get parties to work together to actually solve issues that actually do affect people's lives well, rather I'll, than I'll, I'll, I'll having the- I'll let these guys answer. I'll just say very quickly, one way to start is doing exactly what we're doing here today. Are we still conservatives? Yes. Really? Oh, just, Thank the, just God. a little bit longer, because I'm getting my property values are really just just a little bit longer. <laughs> really helpful. You know, that thank proud God. girls meeting is not going to start itself. Thank right. God for Mitch McConnell. I'll tell you, thank God for the man, because uh, a year ago when they signed into law this tax cut, where 82% went to the wealthiest Americans because we work the hardest and deserve it the most, uh, some of these liberal naysayers were saying, "Hey, man, you're adding trillions to the deficit. You're going to take come back in a year and try and take that away from entitlements." Some of them call it earned benefits, but they're socialist cucks. Um, now it's a year later, and guess what? Uh, Mitch McConnell is now calling for the poor people to pay for the rich people's tax cut by cutting entitlements. I say, we punk you bitches, and winning is all that matters when you're this kind of Christian. As, as, a, as a liberal, as a liberal, as a Democrat, I just want to thank FDR. When he started Social Security, he knew what he was doing. He wanted to help everyone, and everyone would chip in, and everyone would get those, that money when they were 65. Who cares that people in 1937 died when they were 60? That wasn't the point. We'd have the money, and that money would be in a lockbox where Al Gore kept it. And I don't know what happened, but Al Gore had it in a lockbox. I don't know what happened uh, when, the, when the Republicans st must have stolen it. We that gave it to Obama. rich people and had two wars matter. off the books on your credit card. All right, let's get to the next I, question. I was, oh. I was wondering if the conservatives in the room can explain the free market. I um, think, I think yeah. he's saying uh -huh. in real life, that's um, you. Real? It's. Oh, not in real uh, life? Okay, it's uh, them. Go ahead. Um, us, 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 right? Right? Yeah. Yes. That is, that is when um, the, okay, so like there's money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's the kind that's in the cards you get from the bank, and then there's the kind there's you get the, the hand, hand money. money. The hand money. And both are good, but the card one is better. Yes. Um, and you get it usually from China, mm -hmm. sometimes Russia. And nowadays, Saudi Arabia. Saudi, oh my God, they're so cool. I yes. love them. Yes. Um, <laughs> And then what you do is you make regulations that benefit you, um, but then say you're against regulations. Um, you do things like say that every, but you believe in states' rights right up until they want to have, I don't know, clean emission standards of their own. Mm. Um, just stuff like that. Yeah. I think that the free market is when we all get to wear what we want. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to go back to the entitlement thing because Bob Corker, is my favorite kind of conservative because he stood on the Senate floor and expressed very strong disapproval of a tax cut for the rich, which he said will run up the deficit, billions, and then we're going to have to cut Social Security and Medicare. But he did absolutely nothing. You know why? Because he knows Donald Trump is Spider-Man means baby Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> he expressed very, very strong disapproval. You got of time for another one, Alexander? Never mind. Sorry. Oh. And the free market is uh, when it's free, uh, the market is free to give me all the money they want so I will do their bidding as a public servant because the haves have bought off their politicians and the have-nots have not. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, I'd like to thank the panel for coming. Uh, my question is, how does the panel feel about kneeling at, for the national anthem? Yeah. Ah. I feel that we should take people's knees. <laughs> If you don't want to stand, you don't need knees. 
point. There are people who need knees. Yeah. I thought you people were into giving. Um, what you need to understand is that even though Colin Kaepernick said he wasn't protesting the, poli the, the, the troops or the flag or the anthem, uh, we know better what he actually wanted. Think of Susan Collins when she said, I believe you were assaulted, but I know better than you who did it. That's how we are with Kaepernick. Just because he says he's not protesting the anthem or uh, the flag or the troops, it, it doesn't mean that in Fox News we can't say that. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I know that racism and police brutality are bad, but aren't protests against racism and police brutality just a little bit worse? I'm sorry, but I'm much more upset over protests against racism than the actual racism. And all lives matter, that's my safe word when I'm with the Russian hooker, all lives matter. Uh, but just understand that um, we don't need a Black Lives Matter movement because we can say that. And uh, uh, again, the thing to remember about Colin Kaepernick uh, and, and that whole protest is um, kneeling is just completely completely disrespectful, okay? There's, there's no deference in that. Uh, he could have given the finger, he chose to kneel. But uh, what's, what's important to remember is, um, like, like Me Too, uh, we need Me Too, be, but I, I say who me, because I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, but again, I don't want to watch a man doing a protest to protect black male bodies before I watch a sporting event where black male bodies are brutally punished for my pleasure. You guys want to add something from this side? I, well, it's, I'm just glad we brought it up. I'm just glad we're talking about it. And, and in, instead of wasting money on body cams and, and hiring better police, we can, we can kneel and get something done. He supports you know? the, both of those things. I That's wanna, how awful he is. I want to kneel more. Yeah. Let's kneel at we baseball We should always game. kneel during the Let's have an all-kneeling hockey I love league. America, Let's and I say, say if you, you want to take a knee, you go ahead and take both these knees and you suck zombie Reagan's dick. That's what I say. Whoa. Who says that oh, the American... Don't knock it till you've tried it. Come on, people. Who says that the American flag isn't racist? And who yeah. says that Colin Kaepernick can't kneel because the American flag is racist? And also, cops are racist. And I liked his, his socks that were depicting cops as pigs. There's nothing wrong with that at all. He should get to say what he wants to say. And for the first time ever, I tuned into ESPN because they all agree with me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Finally. Wait, what's our time, Alexandra? Okay, uh, I just go need ahead. a few it's... more minutes and I can get a boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just a few more. I am one of those folks that is a person that has a black father who voted for and loves Donald Trump. And I have done everything in my power to make sure that man gets out of office. Um... I have loved this panel because in having a father that loves Donald Trump, you have to pray for your father. <laughs> and that means sometimes you got to pray for Donald Trump. <sighs> That's <f> hard. <laughs> that is hard. And I've done it. And then I prayed for that man's family. And then I sat and I understood. I was like, what if I was Donald Trump? What if I decided I was going to run for president because some people pissed me the fuck off. And then I accidentally won. <laughs> and the reason I won is because I said, I'm from New York. We don't play to lose. We go. And I'm going to make the water so dirty that if I win, it don't matter because crooked Hillary can't get me because everything she does is crooked. And if I lose, well, so what? And he won. And now we live in a world where Donald Trump is president. And just like the cheating husband would know, if he cheated, he'd know. It'd be truth in his face. And this is a man who called from, was sitting there saying, hey, Melania, I love you, baby. You just had my kid. You're the greatest thing on earth. I love you. Hold on. Stormy, that's too much teeth. Hold on. Hold on. Right. I don't want to cut you short, but we got to give up wow. the room. My question I know there's is, our sexy liberal the opening is, act. If that man would lie to his wife on the phone and he would lie about everything else, why wouldn't he lie about stealing this election? And if he stole the election and he cannot be president, because that would mean... Got to wrap it up, buddy. Well, the question becomes, how does he not be president and we all be okay? Okay, we got to mm -hmm. leave it there. We got to thank all of you for coming yeah. to this year's Devil's Advocate. We hope you had a great time. Enjoy the rest of political. I'm a liberal. I hate Donald Trump. 
Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.